Projection of planes in the first quadrant. In this video, we will explore how to project different planes in the first quadrant. We'll start by examining a few basic planes, which will serve as a foundation for understanding more complex ones. First, let's familiarize ourselves with some basic terminology. The sides or edges of a plane are the lines that define its shape, while the corners are the points where these sides meet. To aid our comprehension, we'll use a three-dimensional quadrant system. Imagine a plane positioned within the first quadrant. On the left, we will present a 3D representation of this setup. On the right, we'll display a 2D representation of the same plane for comparison. Let's explore the various orientations of a simple square plane and how these orientations are represented in engineering drawings. A square plane can be positioned in several ways. It can rest parallel to the horizontal plane or be inclined to it. Similarly, it can rest on the vertical plane, either parallel or inclined. Imagine a square plane resting on the HP in a parallel orientation. This is one of the simplest cases. Next, consider the plane inclined to the HP. There are two main ways this inclination can occur. The plane can be inclined such that one of its edges or sides rests on the HP. Alternatively, it can be inclined so that one of its corners touches the HP. The same principles apply when the square plane rests on the vertical plane. It can either be parallel to the vertical plane or inclined in a manner similar to the two cases described for the HP. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to accurately identify and draw these different orientations in a 2D representation. When drawing the projection of planes in 2D representation, it's crucial to focus on the orientation of the planes relative to the reference lines. Here, we'll use the reference line XY to guide us. There are several key points to remember. Edge or side resting on HP or VP. If a problem states that an edge or side of the plane rests on the horizontal plane or vertical plane, the orientation of the plane should be such that one of its edges or sides is vertical. This is demonstrated as follows. Corner resting on HP or VP. If the question specifies that a corner of the plane is resting on the HP or VP, the orientation should be adjusted so that one of the corners points to the left side, as illustrated here. Drawing true shape in relation to HP and VP, it's important to remember where to draw the true shape of the plane. If it's mentioned that the plane is resting on the HP, the true shape should be drawn below the reference line, representing its projection on the HP. Conversely, if the plane is resting on the VP, its true shape should be drawn above the reference line, indicating its projection on the VP. By keeping these points in mind, you can accurately represent the orientation and position of planes in 2D projections, which is a fundamental skill in engineering drawing. This approach ensures clarity and precision in conveying the spatial relationships of the planes. Let's dive into an example to deepen our understanding of projecting planes in engineering drawing. We are given the following instructions. Draw the projection for a rectangular plane having 50 mm length and 30 mm breadth, which is inclined at 45 degrees to the horizontal plane, HP. Here is our reference line. We will draw a rectangle with the given dimensions, 50 mm in length and 40 mm in breadth. Label the sides of the rectangle accordingly, as this represents the true shape of the plane. Next, project vertical lines upward from each corner of the rectangle to the reference line. These lines indicate the true length of the rectangle. Remember to label these projections. The front view is denoted with dashes, A dash, B dash, C dash, and D dash, and the top view without dashes. You might wonder why the front view is represented as a line on the reference line. This is because the shape is resting on the horizontal plane. When viewed from the front, we only see a straight line, representing the edge of the plane as seen from this perspective. The purpose of drawing these true shapes and lengths is to assist us in creating the actual rectangle, which is inclined at 45 degrees as specified in the question. Now, let's move on to representing the rectangular plane at the given inclination. We will incline this true length at a 45 degree angle. Using this inclination as a guide, we will then draw the top view of the rectangle. Start by marking a point on your drawing. This point represents a dash B dash of the true length in the front view. Next, take a protractor and, using this point as the origin, mark a 45 degree angle as illustrated. Once you've established the 45 degree angle, draw a line joining these two points. Then, take a compass and adjust it to match the true length of the rectangle in the front view. 
Place the compass at the point you marked earlier, and draw an arc as demonstrated. Finally, draw a line intersecting this arc. This line represents the true length of the rectangle, now inclined at a 45 degree angle. This step is crucial for accurately portraying the orientation of the rectangle as per the given specifications. Once you've inclined the front view of the rectangle at 45 degrees, the next step is to project vertical lines from the endpoints of this view. Simultaneously, project horizontal lines from the true shape of the rectangle. The intersection points of these lines will give us the top view of the inclined rectangle. Label these intersections as A, B, C, D. This is how the projection of a rectangle, measuring 50 mm in length and 40 mm in width and inclined at a 45 degree angle, appears from the top view. This is how the plane resting in the first quadrant is represented in the orthographic view. I hope this explanation clarifies how to project different planes in the first quadrant. My goal in creating these videos is to provide the simplest and clearest explanations possible. However, producing such high-quality content takes a significant amount of time. Please support my work by liking my videos, sharing them with your friends, and consider enrolling in my complete course on engineering drawing. You can find the link to the course in the video description below.